Number one, Daniel chapter 7 gives us a, a beautiful, beautiful extension of the prophetic message. And again, when you are looking at the word uh, prophetic, or if you are looking at what we call apocalyptic literature, as it is contrasted to the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, the minor prophets and the wisdom literature, which is um, you know, Psalms, uh, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics and, and Lamentations, the minor prophets and judges from Joshua right up into Samuel. You look at the major prophets, Isaiah, Ezekiel, you know, Jeremiah, and then the minor prophets, you get into Zephaniah, Nahum, and etc., into Malachi. Then the Synoptic Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the epistles of Paul, that is Acts, right up into the book of Jude, and ultimately Revelation. If you can look at this into the 66 books outlined, then you quickly begin to pick up what we call apocalyptic literature, or eschatological literature. Then you extract the book of Daniel, you extract the book of Revelation, put them together, read them in Tardent, then pick up a bit of uh, the book of Ezekiel and Isaiah, and for you to enjoy most of it in terms of behavioral patterns, then you take up the book of Leviticus this way, and the book of Hebrews. If you would ask me as a Christian, which of the books of the Bible, when I want to read them, must I read? I would say, okay, take Daniel and Revelation together. Then take the book of uh, Leviticus and the book of Hebrews put together, and then get your nice commentaries in the book of Isaiah. But you are looking for one story here. You are looking at particularly for my interest tonight, what are the events of the last days? Now that the religion has become plural, now that we're moving towards the globalized village, and many of us have been stuck with traditional interpretations of scripture. Come with me and I'll show you a little bit, a small little window into the glimpse of what we call apocalyptic literature. The word apocalypsis, as it appears in the Greek, it simply means those that are on the stage. There is a curtain that blocks the audience from the actors. That curtain. When the curtain is drawn apart, if you have been to theater, you want that... The drawing of the curtain is the apocalypsis. So that the people that are watching can see what is happening on the stage. That's a revelation. That's the revelation into eschatos, into that which will come after this. So we have a, an eschatological literature or apocalyptic literature which allows the generations of today to look into the third industrial revolution, look into the fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth industrial revolution as the world is gathering its momentum and force towards globalization. The question is, what kind of a future are we going to be looking at? And if we believe that the Bible is the word of God, then we need to stand with God yes. on stage and pull away the curtains mm. and give the audience a preview of the actions that will take place on stage. What makes soccer interesting is that I hate soccer because people always lose. So I don't support any team. I support the one that wins to, to avoid my heart problems. I don't want to be traumatized by anything. So you, people must play their soccer. The one that wins, that's the one that I support. Yeah. So I get the results first. Then I watch the soccer. And I don't mind even on the 89th minute or on the 90th minute if the scores are still 0-0. When I already know the results that it was 3-1 or 4-2 or 7-2 on penalties. Then watching a match which you know who will win the match the stress levels are more manageable because you are revising. You are revisiting the future in the present. And the use and purposes of apocalyptic literature is not to create denominational dogmas which lock people into square boxes of thinking. It is the intention of telling the audience of the present day what will happen in the future. So that when what happens, happens, those that are already in knowledge, let not your hearts be troubled. Now, that makes sense to me, because by then, when you see it happen, when you see the wars and rumors of war, and you see problems and diseases and pestilences on every side, let not your hearts be troubled. We already have the results in our hands. I wish I was still preaching today. I said, like, can I have an amen out there? We already have the scores in our hands. We, we, we can see the beast, we can see the tail, we can see the horns, and we can see the wars. But don't worry, that lamb that looks like it had been injured, we know who's going to win this battle at the end. So instead of us focusing on the beast and worried where is the beast drinking tea, where, 
Where is the beast shaking hands? Hey, you and you, you, this one is an Illuminati. He was with the beast. We don't worry about the beast because the beast is not the ultimate subject of the story.